Hello and welcome back to the cesspool that is Super Godzilla 1974. And today I'm going to be reviewing yet another figure. The figure I'm going to be reviewing today is the Far East Monsters Godzilla 1968 from the film Destroy All Monsters. Destroy All Monsters is in my top three favorite Showa films. I absolutely love it. I love the 68 suit. I love the monster designs, I love the amount of monsters, I think the human plot's good, and overall I think it ends up being a fantastic film. And this piece is one of my favorite, more obscure pieces in my collection, and I've wanted to do a video on it for a while, and well, that's what we're gonna do. Start with the box, shall we? Oh. This is one box that I highly recommend you keep because I think it's really neat. See the top, it says Godzilla with a little number one symbol. We'll get to that later. And you got the Far East Monsters logo, and then you've got Godzilla in even bigger, bolder, meaner font. Destroy All Monsters Battle Zone, the collectible series. <laughs> On the side of the box, you have a nice little film strip showing scenes from the movie, which I think is really, really neat. In the background, you have Godzilla 68 just kind of standing there, a little menacing, a little red, a little cool. You have Godzilla written in Japanese at the bottom, and then you've got kind of a description of what this figure is based off of. It says, Ahem. Godzilla is the first kaiju to attack the United States. And destroy all monsters, he lands in New York, blasting the UN building. Destroy all monsters was Godzilla's ninth movie. Destroy all monsters established Godzilla as the leader of Earth's monsters, a concept echoed in later films such as Godzilla vs. Gaikan. That, that's actually extremely debatable, I, don't, I wouldn't trust that. The back, it says, the battle continues. King Ghidorah lands in 2008. Sadly, Ghidorah was the only other monster released in this line. Yes, they originally intended to do every monster from the film, or at least the monsters on the back, which are Minya, Varen, Kamanga, Baragon, Manda, Anguirus, Gorsaurus, Rodan, and Mothra. That would have been absolutely insane to see, and... I don't know the exact reason, maybe it was money issues, maybe it was just licensing issues, I have no idea, but it would have been pretty fantastic to see all of these in a sculpt like this in a diorama piece. Each figure comes with a little piece of the Destroy All Monsters logo, which I will talk about in a minute, and interestingly enough, the top piece that shows Ghidorah is actually part of a drawing. You have the picture of the figure of Godzilla, and then it's like a sketch concept piece for Ghidorah. My guess is they didn't have the figure readily available to take a picture with, but whatever, it still kind of looks cool and weird at the same time. The next side of the box shows a Destroy All Monster poster, and then a giant description of Destroy All Monsters that I'm not going to read. Top of the box, bottom of the box. The one accessory that this figure did come with is the all in Destroy All Monsters. Like I previously stated, this was originally supposed to come with a little pieces of the logo and eventually you would just put them together and it would say Destroy All Monsters. Neat idea that never really came to be. This is actually kind of like a resiny stone texture. It's got a lot of weight to it, surprisingly, and it's actually really well sculpted. I think it's really neat. I would have been a ginormous fan if we got the rest of the set, but it never really happened. So I can't remember which piece the Ghidorah came with, but for now, all I have is all. So yeah, there's that. Nicely painted. It's just white and black resin type of piece here. Pretty neat. And now let's jump to the figure itself. The figure itself is also a resin statue piece. The base is made of plastic and it's painted like the final battle scene in Destroy All Monsters, kind of like an earthy, mountainy kind of countryside, I guess. And then Godzilla himself is resin, or at least I think it's resin. If it's not resin, it's something that's like a statue. With it being this resiny type of material, the detail really, really stands out and I think it actually looks pretty incredible. You have Godzilla's tree bark like skin and you know pretty much everything you'd expect to see on a Godzilla. It's all there, it's all defined, it all looks crisp. I think with resin, and pretty much everyone can agree, resin items, it captures the detail a lot more. And I think some cases resin kits look way, way better than their vinyl counterparts, but not a lot of people are skilled enough to buy them build them, paint them, and show them off. So, 
you don't really get to see that that often. As for articulation, this figure has absolutely none. That's right, it is a statue. It doesn't move, it literally sits there. And it, it looks pretty. But, uh, don't expect anything special. As for paint applications, this figure is painted like your typical Godzilla. You have your charcoal grays, your blacks, your light grays, and it all blends together really well. There's a lot of highlighted, dry brush, sort of lighter grays on top of the scales, and it really makes the figure pop and adds a lot of depth to it. Near the bottom of the feet, you can see it's painted with some brown to show that maybe Godzilla's been dirty from wrestling around in the mud and stuff like that, and I think it adds to the figure's detail. The hand is open because when you get the Ghidorah figure and match him up, one of the heads actually rests inside of the hand, and I think that's actually pretty cool. As for the back, the spines are painted in your typical light gray, bone white kind of color, and it looks pretty good. The eyes are white with black pupil, and the mouth is a bit more gummy than usual. And depending on which figure you get, sometimes it's a dark red, a light red, but this figure, the inside of the mouth is almost a scarlet pink kind of color it's actually really bright but it doesn't deter from the figure at all it still looks fantastic the nails have this grating effect which also adds to the figure's depth and i think it comes out really nice looking one of the main pulls of this figure is the light up slash sound gimmick that comes with it and i will display that now pretty neat I'm fairly certain this figure doesn't come with batteries. I'd have mine replaced and mine was brand new when I bought it. So if you are looking to buy one off of eBay or wherever, grab some batteries. My light feature is a lot dimmer than some of the other figures I've seen, which is kind of a bummer. I'm not sure if it's the LEDs or if it's just the way the figure was built, but it, it doesn't light up too much. It's noticeable, don't get me wrong, but it's not as bright as I'd like it to be. and. I'm not skilled enough to go in there and customize that, especially if it's resin and I'm not going to damage it, so I really just, I'm not going to worry about it. The sound, however, on my figure is actually really, really loud, and I love it to death. Now at a distance this captures the 68 suit almost perfectly, but when you get up close I think he does look kind of goofy, a little weird, I don't, I don't know what it is about it, just the way they sculpted it. He looks a little funky, but I actually kind of like it. Now let's size him up with some of his brethren. Here he is next to the Bandai Godzilla 68, Funko Pop exclusive glow in the dark Godzilla, a bootleg Ultraman Taro figure, <laughs> Marmot Godzilla 1995, and then the Ultra Act Ultraman Hikari. I think this figure is absolutely fantastic for the price and just in terms of what it is. You get lights, you get sound, you get a nicely sculpted figure with a little display base, and he's not enormously huge and doesn't take up a lot of space. I highly recommend this figure for anyone that's just starting to collect or someone that's looking for more obscure pieces that isn't something as common as Bandai or expensive as X+. I originally bought this figure for $20 off of eBay. I believe I saw like 10,000 of them at G-Fest last year for $25. You can pretty much pick the Godzilla up for a dirt cheap price. However, the Ghidorah has become quite an expensive and rare piece. I'm still trying to find one to this day. This figure is an easy 7 or 8 out of 10 for me. I love the 68 suit and I think Far East Monsters captured it pretty damn well in this figure. That pretty much does it for this review. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe, like, you know. If you want, hit that freaking bell at the bottom. It really helps out, especially since my channel is uh, really, really terrible and really small, and it's it's collapsing. Oh, please, God, help me.